Caesar and the group of conspirators are outside the Senate House. The old soothsayer once again approaches. Caesar teases the old man, saying that the Ides of March are here, so where's the danger? But he forgets that the day hasn't finished yet. Artemidorus rushes up with an urgent letter that Caesar simply must read. However, Decius is suspicious and intercepts him. He tells Caesar he's got his own important letter to read too, one that is to do with official government business. Caesar says he'll read Artemidorus's letter later, not realising the huge mistake he's just made. Finally, the conspirators manage to get Antony away from Caesar. Now there is no one to save him. Caesar takes his grand seat in the Senate. Metellus Simba throws himself at Caesar's feet, begging him to let his banished brother return to Rome, really giving the conspirators time to get into killing position. Caesar refuses. Hey team, just a reminder, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps the channel out, and our next upload could be on something taught in your next class. Thanks, and back to the video. Then, one by one, each conspirator begs Caesar to reconsider. Caesar is greatly surprised to see Brutus also pleading with him. Finally, Casca, the last conspirator, kneels and announces that his hands will do the talking. He then stabs Caesar with a knife. All the others join in the killing. As Caesar dies, his last words are to his former pal Brutus. Et tu, Brute? And you, Brutus? He can't believe he is being betrayed by his closest friend and gives in to death. Cinna triumphantly yells out that Tyranny is dead! Brutus tells the gang to wash their hands in Caesar's blood. The others think this is a great idea. They will be celebrated as liberators and the weird blood washing scene will be reenacted for centuries to come. Mark Antony arrives and is shocked to see the bloodied corpse of Caesar. Brutus tries to justify their killing of Caesar. They only did it in the interests of the Republic. Antony struggles to understand what has just happened and pretends to be convinced by Brutus's argument. He slowly shakes each blood-stained hand of the conspirators. Antony asks if he can take the body of Caesar to the marketplace and speak to the crowd. Brutus thinks it's a great idea, but Cassius is wary. Left on his own, Antony stomps the ground in anger and swears to Caesar's corpse that he will avenge his death and kill the murderers. It's the funeral of Caesar. Brutus addresses the crowd, saying he loved Caesar, but he loved Rome even more. The people seem to be convinced by this until Antony steps up to speak. He begins with the famous line, Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. His speech pulls off the amazing trick of praising both Caesar and Brutus, yet manages to convince the crowd that Caesar was a good man who was wrongly killed. Then when he reads Caesar's will that left money to everyone in Rome, the crowd realises that Caesar could not have been the ambitious tyrant that Brutus thought he was. They go utterly berserk. They storm off on a rampage to kill all the conspirators. Antony gets word that his allies, Octavius and Lepidus, are waiting for him at Caesar's house. Meanwhile, Brutus and Cassius have fled Rome. The people, on the other hand, are wild with anger and revenge. They decide to kill a poet they meet called Cinna and rush off to burn the houses of the conspirators.
We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on Julius Caesar, check out our summary of Act 4.